Are you looking for Cloud Architect resume guidance? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Architects and we're an organization dedicated towards building high performance cloud computing careers. In today's video, we're going to provide resume tips for tech careers. First, in this video, we're gonna explore the purpose of the resume. So when you understand exactly what a resume is and the purpose behind the resume, you're gonna know what goes involved to building the perfect resume. Then we're gonna walk you through a Cloud Architect sample resume. And this is a resume that gets requests constantly by recruiters for someone to work. So we know the resume is a good sample based upon the results we get from this resume. And then we're gonna show you how to make your resume better, or at least we're gonna give you recommendations on how to tune your Cloud Architect resume so you can get hired. So to begin, what is a resume or what is the whole point behind the resume? When you understand that the resume is nothing more than an advertisement about you, it's a sales document about you. It's designed to convince the reader that they wanna bring you in for an interview to hire you. So the resume is a sales tool. So because your resume is a sales tool, you have to understand the sales and marketing behind your resume and present your information in your resume as if you were trying to sell yourself to someone because that's exactly what you're doing. And if you can do that and you can deliver that, your resume is gonna be so good, it's gonna be seen by the hiring managers, they're gonna look at it, they're gonna read it, they're gonna bring you in for an interview. And if you prepared for your interview and you have the technical competency and the right attitude, you're gonna get hired. So this is how to get your first cloud architect job. Basically speaking, build a perfect resume, build technical competency, deliver a great presentation, have great communication skills, a perfect attitude, and then get hired with your perfect interview. So the cloud architect resume is just so important. So now that you know that the resume is a sales tool, you've gotta to make it look like more of a sales tool. So let's first look at the lifestyle of the hiring manager and the thinking behind the hiring manager, because uh, that's gonna help you build the resume. First and foremost, hiring managers are really busy people. They're working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. They've got a team to manage. They've got emails coming from all their employees. They've got emails coming from their managers, emails coming from customers. Text messages are coming in. Messages are coming in on other communication platforms. They're busy people. And when hiring managers decide to hire, it's because they've got a backlog of work, generally speaking, or they're looking for a competitive advantage and they need people on their team. So they don't have a lot of time. So first and foremost, now that you know the hiring managers are busy people and they don't have a lot of time, you gotta capture them with the resume. They gotta look at this and in one second or less, they've gotta say, read it or they're gonna discard it. And if they discard it, the opportunity is lost forever. So at the top of your resume, you need something to capture them that screams, read me, read me, read me. If you can do that, then your resume has a much better chance of getting you hired. So first and foremost, we have to convince the hiring manager to read your resume. Then your resume needs to show the hiring manager that you are a solution to a challenge they have. And we're gonna talk about that later, but then the resume needs to position you as a challenge. So first you've gotta get it read. And then secondly, you've gotta show the hiring manager that they need you for a certain number of reasons. So that's the next part of the resume because you've got to convince them not only to read it, but that you're a solution to their problem. Because remember, hiring managers hire people because they've got a backlog of work or they're busy or they need a competitive advantage. They're not hiring people to increase their expenses. They're not hiring people because they want additional headcount. They're hiring people to meet an objective that they have or that business has. So your resume should show that you are a solution to the challenge or the problems. So what can you do to get your, your resume read? First and foremost, you've got to have an attention grabber. And when we walk through the Cloud Architect sample resume, we're going to show you the attention grabber that we use. And then we're going to show how we prove competency. So let's walk through a Cloud Architect sample resume. Now the Cloud Architect sample resume is going to need to show the following. The Cloud Architect sample resume is going to need to show that you can solve the problems and needs and goals of the hiring manager. So let's explore what the hiring manager desires. First and foremost, when you pull hiring manager, they tell you that they want someone that can do the job, which means technical competency. So your resume must scream technical competency. 
Now, the other things that hiring managers, when you ask them, say is they say they want someone they can trust, someone that is safe, meaning they know what they know, they know what they don't know, and they know how to find the answers to things they don't know, but won't do things that could cause damage to someone. Hiring managers will then tell you they want someone that's energetic, enthusiastic about their work. They want an energizer or someone that can bring out the best in others. They want someone that's a team player because they know that it takes a team to deliver anything exceptionally good. And they want to know that you're someone that can go above and beyond. So let's make sure we try and get these things into the resume, capture them and show them there's a solution to the problem and then show them that you're a desirable candidate. Get brought in for an interview, do a great interview and get hired. That's the process. So let's examine this resume. Look at the top line of this resume. First and foremost, it instantly screams competency and read me. Why? Because it has Mike Gibbs, MS, comma, MBA, comma, CCIE, comma, Google Professional Cloud Architect, comma, an AWS certification. Right then and there on the top line, there's no searching for it. And I use these big giant letters. The next thing is an executive summary. And in my executive summary, what did we do? We showed the things that hiring managers care about. We showed that I can meet all the hiring manager's goals directly in the executive summary. Why is that so important? I caught them with the attention grabber and the executive summary says why I can help. Right then and there, we've already accomplished two thirds of the challenges. Now, now that we've gotten past that, what well, let's go over the experience. In the experience, you list every job that you've had and the time that you've had it, and you list a summary of the main functions of your job duties, roles, and responsibilities. And then after that, you have these easy to read bullet points. And the bullet points should basically talk about accomplishments you've done or major things that you've done. Again, showing competency, capabilities, and that you can meet the requirements of the job. So really that's what we're trying to show you. Now, communication skills are absolutely critical for your technology career and communication skills for cloud computing and communication skills for cloud architects and communication skills for your tech career are just so important. So put them in here if you have them. If you're a published author, write down your publications. If you've given presentations, put some of the presentations down. For someone like me who's done thousands, you can't put them all down, but put some of them down. See, the resume is a sales advertisement. It says why you have all the attributes and qualities that hiring managers need. So pop them on your resume. And when you kind of do this, this works really great. Now let's talk about what you should do for your resume if you're not someone with a large amount of experience. You still need to have whatever's best about you at the top of your resume, an attention grabber. Then put an executive summary on your resume, something that shows how you can solve the hiring manager's problem. Now I'm going to talk about the objective. If there is an objective on your resume, get rid of it as fast as possible. Putting an objective on the resume was some of the worst advice I've ever seen. So that's the worst cloud computing career guidance I've ever seen. An objective says what you want out of the relationship. An executive summary shows what you can do for the employer. I hate to say it, but no employer really cares about your goals and needs or initiatives unless you're part of their family or hired already. They care about what you can do for the organization. So if you're telling them their objective is to learn something, well, that's meaningless to them. Their objective is to have someone that can be a contributing member of their team and make the organization do better. So get rid of the executive because people don't like selfishness. And when you sell what you want without offering a solution to what they want, it can often kick you out of the rankings. So grab them, executive summary of what you can do. Now list your experience. Now, if you've got a previous job, even outside of computing, that's okay. Perhaps you worked in customer service, pull out the things that are valued from customer service, the ability to take a problematic customer and make them happy communication skills, soft skills, levels of emotional intelligence that come from these careers, whatever it is, pull out the things that the hiring managers care about from your previous experiences. Now, if you've not been in tech before, you still have to do the following. You have to prove some degree of technical competency and you also have to get past what I call the keyword scanners. So there's these keyword scanners that are out there that are scanning for keywords and, and if they pick up a keyword, then they'll pass on your resume to say the hiring manager or someone to look at it. So you've got to have the keywords in your, in your resume and the keywords are the big technologies are the things that you might be working on. So I call this search engine optimization for resumes. So we've got to get these keywords in there. But 
if we can, if we just stuff the keywords in there, you know, get look at past the resume scanner, but nobody's going to read it or care. But if we put the keywords there in a way that's going to show your motivation, motivation, show competency, and show that you're willing to go above and beyond, we've already met some of the hiring manager's goals. So that's what we do. We recommend you put a research and development section on your resume. And in the research and development section, make it look like a job. Show projects, be detail oriented, and show how these projects give you the perfect background for the position you desire. I'll give you an example that we use with our students when we have them set up their research and development sections. The cloud is nothing more than a virtual network in a data center. So if you want to be a competent cloud architect, you need to learn the network and the data center because otherwise you'll never understand how it works. So in your research and development section, talk about some routing and switching labs that you've done. Talk about setting up firewalls. Talk about working with containers. Talk about working with virtualization such as VMware ESXi or KVM. Talk about setting up Active Directory and using that as a means to learn IAM. Set up a LAMP stack, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Set up an open access VPN server. Literally put it all there. And you know what? Build a cloud. Uh, I mean, a real cloud, like a Nutanix cloud or an OpenStack Ansible cloud. Build a pure cloud computing environment. Pop all that in the research and development section. Sell why you are the right hire. Let all the other people put down their silly labs that says configured an EC2 instance or set an S3 bucket. All important things to do, but nobody's going to hire a cloud architect on that. Instead, prove that you can build a cloud. Prove that you've got exceptional data center knowledge. Prove that you've got exceptional network knowledge. Prove that you've got good soft skills. You're a team player. People will read your resume. They'll bring you in. And if you have the skills, the competency, and the communication skills and the right attitude, you're going to get hired. So the research and development section can be your differentiator. Show how you're motivated. Show how you're willing to go above and beyond. Show how you're energetic and enthusiastic and passionate, and you will get the cloud architect job as your dreams. So think about it from the hiring manager's perspective. What would you want from a hiring manager? Someone that can build a cloud or someone that can set up an S3 bucket? Seriously, think about it. And when you're putting your resume together, what would you want to read? What do you read? What advertisements do you look at? Something that grabs your attention and shows the solution to your problem. Otherwise, you just tune it away. Uh, who wants to look at advertisements otherwise? So, in summary, the resume is an advertisement of you. So make your resume sell you. Make your resume show your capabilities and follow this, get hired, and accelerate your tech career. Let me tell you some things we do at Go Cloud Architects to help the Cloud Architect community. On Mondays and Thursdays, we have a free How to Get Your First Cloud Architect Job Webinar. And on our free How to Get Your First Cloud Architect Job Webinar, we talk about everything that's necessary to get hired as a Cloud Architect. We talk about your Cloud Architect resume. We talk about Cloud Architect interviewing techniques. We talked about developing Cloud Architect career competency. Everything we do is based on helping you build your cloud computing career and we do this completely free and on Monday and Thursday and we will tell you what you need to do to get hired but we will also answer any cloud architect career planning sessions that you might have and we do that completely free on Monday and Thursday. Now every Tuesday we have a cloud architect experience webinar and on our cloud architect experience webinar we tell you how to get real cloud architect experience the kind of experience that's going to build incredible cloud computing career competency, the kind of experience that's going to help you get your cloud architect job by proving to hiring managers that you are a real cloud architect, that you have cloud computing knowledge, design knowledge, and you know how to do the job of a cloud architect. And we do that completely free every Tuesday. And on a lot of these calls, we actually come up with a cloud architect challenge where what we'll do is we will give you the technical requirements, the business requirements, the legal requirements, and the goals of an organization and live on the call, you and your team will design a cloud architecture. We do this most Tuesdays and it's completely free. Now on most Wednesdays, not all, but on most, whenever we have time, we do a cloud architect question and answer session live on YouTube. And you can bring us any cloud architect career question you may have, and we will answer them live in real time. So we know that your cloud architect career is built upon knowing what to do, how to do it, and why to do it. And getting to your goals as fast as possible is important because you know if you're not working you're losing money so we do everything we can to try and assist you by providing free cloud architect career guidance on our youtube lives every wednesday we also have a free aws certified solution architect associate ebook i'll leave the link in the description below additionally we have a free aws certified solution architect associate course i'll leave the link in the description below and on june 15th to june 20th we are going to do a free 
AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional Bootcamp. It's going to be live on YouTube. We're basically going to do 40 minutes of questions, or, or lecture, and 20 minutes of questions per hour. So this is going to be more like a live classroom to give you a real classroom experience. And it's completely free. It's something we do for the Cloud Architect community to make sure you have access to quality training materials. I'd like to thank you so much for watching this video. It's an honor and a privilege to be part of the Cloud Architect community and be able to present to you via YouTube several times per week. I don't take that lightly, and we try very hard to provide the best cloud computing education on this channel. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your lives and part of your study plan, and I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. Take care.